uh, this is one of the black riders here that we did with oils. You can see there's greens on the horse. There's greens on his coat. We want to try and do the same thing here. So let's get our big old brush going again, and let's uh, let's fire up some of our pre-glaze on this. Then we're going to leave it on there. We'll leave that on there, and then we'll remove some after a while here. Uh, oh, there's our, our Payne's Gray here. We'll use some of that on the base again. Here, let's uh, move this guy out of the way here. Don't care about the other ones. Be amazed when the Mars came out in 20. Yeah, that that's crazy. When when I just like you're saying, I look back at that one, and it's just like, oh, how quaint an Elegoo Mars. You look at that like you'd look at a pager almost now, compared to your cell phone, and that that's uh, the El the the Mars and that sort of thing. It's getting to be almost in that uh, that range. Which is just crazy to think. Now here I did get some of the a little bit of the thinner in there just to make sure that's gonna flow. Um what the heck? Raw umber. Why not raw umber in here? Because on the rider himself we're gonna throw more of the Van Dyke Brown and the indigo. So here's some of our Van Dyke Brown. Some of the indigo. And you notice we're kind of focusing on this one side over here. Because the other side, if it's going to have all that flame effect on it, well, we want this side to be cooler. Not just darker, but also cooler. Here, let's get some more of our darks into this. And this is that, that same pre-glaze that we just did on our little ward guys. And we'll go back to them as soon as we get our, our colors placed here. But it's going to be a little, little bit of a twist because we got some object source lighting that we're doing down here. But first I got to make sure I at least get that covered. I'm going to start to switch now to something that's got a little bit more of a red to it. Kind of a subtle thing here. And then what we'll do is we will wipe this away. Might even just let a smidge of that cadmium red work its way into here too. Like so. And one of the other chapters in the Book of Wobble is that uh, sometimes it has to be messy before it can be neat. And this is the this is the messy part here that we love so much. Well, that I love so much. Other folks flee in terror at the messy part. I relish the messy part. Because who doesn't love a nice mess? And nice and hideous looking. That's the way we like it. Well, let's see, the Ender 3 has been a great workhorse. Yeah, that's that's what I have. Uh, that is something that I have to get working because it, besides you know, our imprintable terrain, also the printing goes ever on. They have terrain. It's uh, part of their current campaign and such. I've got to be able to print that stuff out. So it's going to be it's going to be really busy here trying to get all these different printers working. And all everything you're seeing me painting here this entire weekend, basically. Most of the stuff I've painted this week has been 3D printed. Because this is from Lost Kingdoms right here. And that was that was 3D printed. Now, let's see. Twitcher is good at the messy part. Not so much the neat part. Yeah, but uh, hey, let's look at it this way. You know, the messy part sets up the neat part, right? The messy part sets up all the neat stuff that comes later. And this is very much like what we did here. Except you can see there's a little bit of a, a red red tone there. I'll come back to him. 
And then we're also going to move on to this guy right here, too. So let's uh, see what other fun little things that we can do here for some of his, see this fur right here? Oh, thanks, Twitcher. Yeah, that, uh, literally, that's how this thing started, because, well, it went from this to this, and then, uh, then to this. And it just didn't have to take very long, did it? That's the best part about it. And you can just, you can stop when you say, you know what, that is good enough. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of folks that would have been happy with this thing an hour ago, hour and a half ago. So we'll set you off to the side now. And let's, let's uh, dive in here with our lighter colors once again. This is our same, same brush here, again, with the not-so-much paint on there. And you can see it's mixing right away. In no time at all, you can see it mixing. We have this fun shield here. This is also from the Printing Goes Ever On. That's one of their dwarf shields there. I just I had a whole bunch of extra right-handed shields. I, I much would rather have left-handed shields. They give you the option for both. So I had all these uh, right-handed shields. I just uh, took one and broke it up there and threw it on the base. And now I've got myself a nice little broken shield on the base gives it a little bit of a little extra oomph there a little, little decorative now do we want to make him more of a a white warg or i think i see more brown on this so i'm actually going to go here with more of a burnt umber ish type of a thing here let's see what happens we'll lighten this up a smidge here also Get some of the extra paint off of there. Maybe even a little bit of the brilliant yellow pale work its way in there. Oh, thanks, Twitcher. It's I, it's a difficult thing. It's always been that way, even when I was doing acrylic stuff, because the the whole shaded base coat thing. It was it was a little bit like the underpants gnomes where it was like step one steal the underpants step two make big profits it's like well wait a minute what'd you skip in there and it's almost a little bit like that where you're just kind of uh, you steal the underpants and you end up with big profits and that that's kind of handy when it comes to the the miniature painting side of things being able to get through these fat. Now, I thought maybe that was broken off, but that's not broken off. That's actually, I do believe that ears is missing there. So that's kind of interesting. It's like uh, a little bit of a casualty there. All right, where's my... Let's see if we can't throw in some glazy things here again. Where's our glazing brush that we used? Just grab one of these guys here. We'll take some Drax Fultum, otherwise known as S Fultum. Just like we did on the other one, right? We're just going to drop in a few little glazes of things here and there. Maybe we do something different for his bow. We'll just, uh, let's go with the Drax Fultum again here. Uh, bye bye Sakamoto. It's a it's a dry brush kind of motion, right? Uh, I had to describe it for folks because uh, they were just having a hard time with the oils because they were putting way too much paint on there. And I would watch them paint, and I and I'd tell them like, look, you're putting seven times more paint on there than I do. Once I told them, I d I just used that term of dry brushing. Then they kind of understood, and that was very handy. 
Uh, Playboy, it's a combination of all that. These are for me, but it's also to help out the printing goes ever on. Uh, just like when we painted our gigantic thing here for our imprintable terrain. Because yeah. uh, that's how big this thing is. <laughs> that That's the idea of elevator going up. That is how huge this thing is. But that was also to kind of help out them. Uh, this was to help out Reaper with their Reaper Virtual Expo. The Mostly the Lord of the Rings stuff. Well, that's going to be for me. Where's my uh, lizard men here? We do also paint a lot of commission things, too. If I could find my lizard men. I think oh, those are downstairs. But here are some commission things. So all this stuff for a creature caster. That was all commission stuff right there. And the the black heart bust right there. Where is our actually the cruel seas? Yeah, that was that was for me, but that was again to help out Warlord Games. Here we're trying to help out uh, Dark Sword right here with all of these tutorials. This was a commission piece for oh gosh. Uh, Oh, I forget what their name is. Can't remember anymore. And we've got this was another commission right here. A bunch of Reaper things. And we've done an awful lot. All of the Dothraki here. All commission stuff. An awful lot of our. Here, let's get to our. One second there. Almost there. These were commissions here. More commission stuff there. More commission stuff there and and there as well, so we do an awful lot of that. Uh, one true fraud. If you're someone skilled at miniatures, uh, well, one true uh, one true fraud. Uh, you saw the you saw the 2D art. Everything that I did, okay, right here. So that was done with miniature paints. Uh, I painted it on stream. You can go to the YouTube channel. In fact, I think I've got four different videos, maybe where I'm doing 2D art, but just with miniature paint. The principles are all the same. Sharp edges, soft edges, warm, cool, light, dark. They're the same. It's just when you're painting the miniatures, you don't have to, well, now you have to worry about the back of it, right? With like a painting, you don't have to worry about what's behind the building because you can't see that. That's a little bit different than say when you're doing the 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 two D the two D art, right? And there's a little link for you there to the YouTube channel. Now again we're doing one of these little glazy type things, but you notice we're just touching the brush to it. See how it's just kind of floating down here? And we're doing this with Van Dyke Brown right now. Um, the, oh, Playboy, I never don't really do the talking about prices and stuff while doing the streams or anything like that. It's uh, just something I, I do in private messaging and, and such. That, was, uh, that one right there was actually a birthday present for somebody. I painted that in June. Now, the other art that you saw, all those, uh, the old paintings and such, like the wolf and everything, those were things that we used to sell at art shows. I used to sell them at Renaissance fairs. But uh, we, we stopped doing the 2D art in, well, basically in the aftermath of 9-11, which basically was just like this situation now. Uh, what what 2020 was like for everybody else, that's what 2002 was like for us. And that just, that unfortunately, wiped out the 2D art business, and that is what made us miniature painters, which was unexpected. <laughs> Nobody expected that less than me, that's for sure. Now we're going to do some glazing of greens into here. Like so. Let's uh, get the hand right here. 
Do some more glazing in the here for the skin. His hand up again here. And now we'll we'll go back in there, obviously, and do some more. Now let's do. I'm not really worried about any colors on the base because I'm going to be using the Luke's APS flock and other things like that. So really, nothing I'm going to worry about there. I'm thinking that I'm going to go with some of the. Yeah, this is a little bit of indigo blue with the white in there. Uh, I'm here in Chicago, Playboy. Here in Chicago. Now let's uh, grab ourselves more of our light here. We don't want to obviously make this look like it just came out of the the weapon shop here. But we need to give it some kind of a glint somewhere. Otherwise, not really going to translate very well. Well, thank you very much for hanging out here. Uh, boy, it, it's been a long time since I was last in Canada. Last time was oof, in the 90s. Yes, that was the last time. I, and I'm pretty sure that was for a La Femme Nikita convention. Yes, that was for a La Femme Nikita convention. We went to Toronto. And, yeah, that was towards the end of the whole 2D art thing right there. That was probably 98 or 99 or something like that. Okay, so very quickly. Didn't take long, did it, just to... Get some nice sharper edges on that. Okay, let, let's see. Maybe we go even somewhat lighter on his fur there. So you could check out uh, just at wapeliasblogspot.com. I have a whole bunch of 2D art there. You can see a lot of the Celtic theme stuff, the spacecapes, an awful lot of sci-fi theme stuff. At a certain point here, we will be painting some landscapes in Middle Earth because I need uh, backdrops, painted backdrops for the battle report. So yeah, we'll be we'll be painting some landscapes of Middle Earth, of course, with the oils because that's going to make it a lot easier. Oh, thanks, Playboy. I appreciate that. And there's a link for you provided by Armored Wolf. So, folks, be sure, speaking of artwork, be sure to check out Armored Wolf's Etsy page because Armored Wolf is a really fantastic artist. He just finished another dice bag. I saw the pictures of it. That dice bag was glorious as they all are. And Armored Wolf is also an accomplished painter. Uh, he's a true craftsman, leatherwork, metalwork, you name it. So go check out the Armored Wolf Etsy page. And, and not just for the dice bags. There's definitely more than the dice bags. Hey, Rhapsody Studios, how you doing? Uh, I just, uh, well, I saw your Instagram, speaking of Instagram, I saw your Instagram post. Is that That's the latest uh, project you got going on there. It, it sort of flew by. I didn't get a chance to read the, the, the text on it. Spark my ganja. Oh, thank you so much, Estebano. I appreciate that. Estebano Sandoval, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And Gannon says, hello, little... Oh, that's not a hobbit. That's a, that's a little orc. It's like, man, who is that guy? Who is that guy? Uh, don't, don't pay any attention to him. Uh, he, he's like, he smells really bad, too. Yeah, I noticed that. Oh, he smells bad. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Actually, uh, well, let's see. I, <laughs> I, I was not terribly successful at French in high school there. I do know je ne sais pas and that's uh that's i don't or je ne sais pas francais that's i don't know french so that might be 
do you know the word? That's what that might be. And again, I, I uh, apologize for the lack of knowledge there of things French. There was one point that I was able to read and write French, but I was never able to speak it, and I couldn't understand it when it was spoken to me, which was uh, a little disappointing. Ah, you shall not pass. Ah, okay, so, yeah. Vu, and, and no, okay, yep, yeah, now, uh, now it's making sense there. So thank you so much for... Uh, for giving me a, a couple of clues on there because I was like, man, I should be able to just kind of suss out what that is. Also, too, the uh, the chat window is actually in between. I have to look through several lights and my uh, camera boom just to be able to see it. So sometimes I don't always know what I'm looking at there. All right, let's continue here with some more glazy stuff. Uh, just got another commission for a board game, a D&D one with 48 miniatures. Ah, well, congrats there, Rhapsody Studio. Congratulations. I hope that, uh, hope that that is fun. I'm sure it will be. Now, do I want to go with the raw umber here? No, we'll use... Ah, uh, let's have some fun maybe with some Terra Rosa up here. Let's go Terra Rosa up here, because Terra Rosa is one of the very, very few, and I mean really few colors here, that is opaque, but also doesn't say titanium or cadmium. So it's a really unique color for sure. I want to see if I can't also make this one a little bit darker than the other one. That's what we're going for here. Now this is something, this will be an interesting little test here. So this is our our raw umber. Can we do something like we typically do with the burnt umber? Looks like we can. It does seem like we can do that. So I'm just trying to give him a darker tone here on his back. Maybe we'll even use some of that on the pants right here, some of that on his shoes slash boots whatever now this is what we mean by dry brush right see how little paint there is on that brush this this is why people tend to run into problems with the oils because they're just throwing way too much paint on there and it's also done with way too much liquid on it as well those are kind of the twin towers of pain Oh, thank you so much, Playo. I appreciate that. Now, uh, I, th I think you'll get a kick out of tomorrow when we do one of those massive just painting sessions of tons and tons of stuff, just one figure after another. It'll sort of be like this, but sort of twice as long. So now we haven't forgotten this. We have not forgotten this. It's time to remove some paint now. Time to do a little bit of paint removal. And that's why we have a whole bunch of these sponges out here. Because this way, now here especially where I've got all these different colors here, I don't want to be mixing those together, right? So here, let's uh, take our sponges like so. And you know, even the direction that we're going, we're kind of like it's being later. Look at this side. Now look at that side. Let's uh, oh, here we go. This you're gonna notice. Look at how blue that is by comparison. I'm just gonna shove you out of the way there. Oh, thanks, Cleo. This is why, uh, well, where's our Aussie arc right here? Because people saw this happening, the same sort of thing happening here, and they said, man, I would have been happy with that just like here. Just what you got. Look at all the different colors we've already got there. Now, it helps when it's something that's got more of a uh, 
more detail on it. Now I'm going to see if I can find the Canite Shadow Stalkers here. Where's that? Oh, actually, a couple of things here that could be helpful to see. So first, this kind of a thing we did. Oh, we did it on all these scions of flame here. It, you'll see the kind of the same sort of thing that we did on those guys. And then this was another case of we had a whole bunch of different range of blues on there, and then we wiped it away. Mostly Prussian blue, but also a little bit of the a little bit of cobalt blue too, and of course indigo. Now I'm just going to take this. We're going to wipe some of this off of the base here. And again, the base, all that is, that is nothing more than a little bit of tree bark. Not kidding. That's all it is. It's just tree bark. If you go onto the YouTube channel and check out the the spirit host, yeah, the spirit hosts, we actually, basically the pre-glaze was white. The Balrog also was practically white to start out with because of all the object source lighting. He was darn near white, and we actually made him darker from there. So it's very much the opposite of what you would normally think. Uh, so bye-bye. Those are uh, the Canite Shadow Stalkers. Those are uh, Dark Elves or whatever, and they're for Warcry. It's the same, uh, same system as the Cypher Lords here, and I think these are not Splintered Fang. These are your uh, Untamed Beasts, I think, these guys right here. Let's see, Rhapsody says, uh, friends and I were watching, and they were like, oil painting is sorcery. It really is. It's the best kind of sorcery because it's, it's cheap. <laughs> Cheaper sorcery is the best sorcery ever. It's sorcery on a budget. There you go. That's what it is. Okay, we got ourselves some nice nice things set up here. I will also throw out this right here. And, and, and someone did locate. There was a UK source for that. They did find one. Here, I'm just going to squeeze some of that out there. And we also need a little bit of our Fanchon Red as well. Let's see if we can find that. There it is. Uh, Manix, it's gonna most likely start around four, between four and four thirty. I wish I could give you a super exact time, but somewhere between four and four thirty, most likely. It it uh, it could be earlier, but just if you're looking for a kind of a ballpark time, somewhere between four and four thirty. Now let's get our another one of our filberts out here. Cleo, definitely, you got to have the assort affordable sorcery for sure. So, Mannix, we're in the central time zone here in the U.S. So, that is central time U.S. Ah, there's my Fanchon Red. Oh, Cadmium Scarlet, we're going to need that too. We're going to need some of that Cadmium Scarlet out here. Let's see if we can find it. There it is. And we'll just have to throw that somewhere here where there's space on the palette. There's not a lot. Now, if you're looking for, I know we've we've added a few things since, but all of the opaque stuff is up here. That's your quick dry white, brilliant yellow pale, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow deep, terra rosa. Now we just added fanchon red and cadmium scarlet. Those are all opaques. Along here, what you usually see is Van Dyke brown, indigo, umber, and black. We added Payne's gray here just for fun. Normally, there's blues and stuff down here, but instead we've got that olive green, and then over here we've got some of our browns. We Again, we added a few other colors that are typically not on the palette. Typically not on the palette. So here we're going to start to block in a little bit of our glow right here. Hey, Bitron, nice to see you. Uh, let's see. Oh, no problem, Mannix. Yeah, I, I try. I, I would prefer to be able to start actually at 3 or 3.30. But uh, Kathy also has her shadow run thing or whatever. And that's going to... means we'll have to get some things ready first. And I have to make sure all of those dwarves are ready to go. 
So it might uh, I might still be priming things at uh, two or three o'clock. Okay, so there's a little bit of our lighting working its way in there. So Vitran, I hope you're doing good. Uh, Vitran, I'll show you the uh, let me show you the stuff that we were working on before here. So we've got the these warg riders from the printing goes ever on. We hit them with our pre-glaze. Then we started to add some of our lighter colors. And then here is uh, the first one that we finished. So this went out of the way. Just kind of, we'll wait for that to dry. And then we can add all of our wonderful uh, basing elements to that. So bye-bye, Sakamoto. This is, it's thicker color, but it's also much drier. So you can see, again, we talk about dry brushing. There's not a lot of thinner in this, but because we're applying it like a dry brush, it keeps it thinner. It's also, you can see how it's mixing. Look at how dark that side is versus that side. Also, too, cadmium colors are just kind of naturally a little bit thicker. Definitely a little bit thicker. Now let's switch over to the other side here. And this is where we're going to go more towards the cool side of things, right? And again, it's very little paint on the brush. You can, I can actually hear the sound that the brush is making as it just kind of dusts over the top of this. But again, we're just letting things kind of mix together here. You can see how that mixes. Means we're going to have to run back over here get some new paint on that brush. Oh, thanks, Bithron. I appreciate that. So, uh, yeah, tomorrow we're going to be painting up a whole bunch of the the dwarves from the printing goes ever on. I've got, well, I don't know. I'll, I'll try and get one more round of printing going tonight after the, the stream here. But I've holy smoke, so I have a ton of stuff here. This and there's also there's some more curing downstairs. There's more goats curing downstairs. So we're gonna have ourselves some some goat riders and such here. And then we also have some infantry here as well. I'm kind of focusing on the Iron Hills element, but there's runesmith, there's rangers, so you can basically pretty much make any kind of dwarf army you want, pretty much. Uh, yeah, miners, runesmiths, rangers, it's just, it's all there. Bye-bye, uh, Sakamoto. That, unfortunately, won't have any effect on whether it's matte or not. That's going to depend entirely on the color itself, because, let's say, something like uh, Terra Rosa or Brown Matter, these dry very flat. So does Cobalt Blue, but there's other colors that dry much more let's see where's a burnt sienna so this color is going to dry glossy it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't burnt sienna will dry glossy and there's some paints that dry glossy like ultramarine blue always dries glossy cobalt blue is always going to dry flat does it really matter this is just about controlling the amount of paint that you got on the miniature because if you put too much on there eventually you will not be able to add any more at least not till it dries which is also going to take longer because you got too much paint on there. So I'll catch you later, Cleo. Thanks again for watching. And hopefully we'll, we can see it tomorrow and Monday because, well, uh, Saturday and Monday, those are usual stream days there. So hopefully we'll see you then. And thanks again for stopping by. Uh, let's, oh, uh, Bitsaran, is, uh, is that one of those uh, paint racks right there? Actually, the, what is it? Oh, the uh, makeup display things, uh, like for nail polish or whatever. That's, uh, I use those for painting rack or paint racks, but I also use them for all of the miniatures, right? Because they're sitting on these Dead Reaper paint jars. And here again, the same dry brushing, but not dry brushing because 
you can see it's mixing with the paint that's already here. That is that extra special advantage. Now we're going to come back in here with, yep, we can use this one here. Let's come back in here with a little bit of our Van Dyke Brown, even a little bit of olive green, because we got to establish some dark here. You have to, you must have dark to show the light. So here's that dark that's going to come in there. Hey, Prison Mike, uh, it, it, it's dry, wet blending. You get better wet blending the drier the paint is. That makes total sense. It totally does. Okay, uh, uh, Rhapsody Studios, you have a good night. And hopefully we see you tomorrow. So folks, be sure to give Rhapsody Studios a follow. Because Rhapsody Studios also is using the oils. Uh, let me let me scroll up here real quick. Uh, let's see. I had a friend laser cut me some MDF paint red. Ah, okay. I just want to see here. Ah, there we go. Okay. So yeah, certain colors with the oils, they are just going to dry more you, you can't do anything about it except once they're once they're cured then you put the anti-shine over the top and this is the same stuff i use for my acrylics all the time oh yeah sure uh, bye bye the the term dry brushing was more just people could recognize what that term was because with the oil paints, they were just, it was so new and different to them. But you say something like dry brushing, you know, something like that, they can understand that. Because what was happening is, now this is how little thinner that I use. This, this, this is a water bottle cap, and this has been sitting here for four days. What they would do is they would be using this over and over again, because with acrylics, they're, they're constantly moistening the brush, right? And they would wonder why the paint was coming off all the time. And that's because they were putting all this liquid on there. And once I realized Hello, that's what they were doing. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much, guy man stuff. I appreciate that. And so does Gandalf. Oh, spark my ganja. Fly, you fools. So that's, that's the thing. Um... When you're using the oils here, you're definitely going to want to have less and less paint on the brush. And one way to do that is to, for all intents and purposes, use it like a dry brush. But it doesn't look like a dry brush here. Just say, here, we put some indigo on the brush, right? And we're going to shove this down into the crevice here. We're going to put some of this out on the edges here. And now we're going to grab another brush here just to do some blending with. But you can see that's uh, that doesn't have the usual dry brush look. And oh, look, I can blend this after the fact. So these are the kind of things that it's really hard for people to wrap their heads around with the oils when they just they've never used them before. I mean, it's like me with the, the 3D printing, right? I had no idea what the heck I was doing. I had no frame of reference. Uh, oh, oh, bye bye, uh, Sakamoto. You could always uh, send me uh, some pictures of your stuff. Uh, uh, Instagram, yeah, just Wapelius on Instagram. You could send me a picture of your stuff. I could that way. I could look at what you got going there. Uh, bye bye, Sakamoto. Yep, yeah, uh, I've been painting miniatures since 2001. And unfortunately, the last Golden Demon here in Chicago was in 2011. Was it 2011 Armored Wolf or was it 2010? It was one of those two. Um, let me just see if I can find... Ah, yeah, here we go. So, yeah, those that must be those things right there. Yeah, that's... Uh, and there, Oh, and there's our armies on parade and our Bilbo's Bash and all of our army painting things. 
uh, and this, uh, so this was that last year, right, Armored Wolf? So this is actually the in my possession. This is the last of the golden golden demon things that I have right here, the Prince Imrahil. It's the last thing that I have. So yeah, uh, most of our uh, lizard man stuff and our yeah, a lot of the lizard man stuff that went into the golden demons there. In fact, the unit of Cold One Riders, that was, uh, yeah, that was actually the first, uh, among the first of the Golden Demon stuff that we managed to uh, win back in the day. I'm going to get some more of this uh, olive green here. Bye-bye. Uh, yeah, we used to get the White Dwarf all the time. Uh I have actually brought those back out again for articles on Lord of the Rings, which have been really helpful because there's a lot of old scenarios in there. There's even some supplements as far as armies that never made it into any of the books. So that's uh, kind of nifty. And uh, you like scenarios where you've got uh, Canned versus Harad. And, and they're basically doing border raids against each other. There's a, there's a really fun Easterling set of scenarios, too. Ah, okay, so that was uh, your Arwen and uh, Dole and our uh, Prince Imrahil. Okay, Arwen and Imrahil. But I don't know why I thought that was 2011. I guess because it's weird because it feels like it was a bazillion years ago and then sometimes it doesn't seem like, well, that wasn't that long ago, was it? And then you realize, oh yeah, it was a long time ago. Oh, thanks, bye-bye. Yeah, Samoda, I appreciate that. Yeah, there was the, they, they stopped doing the Golden Demons and then, uh, well, then the Crystal Brush thing came along to... Uh, uh, let's see, uh, Adepticon, which was sad for me because I really preferred the Rogue Demon instead. They they were they were going to have the return of Golden Demons here to Chicago in 2020 at Adepticon, which that that was kind of weird. To think that, well, you know, eight years is, that's a long time. And then, well, eight years is not necessarily that long until it is. <laughs> Couldn't really make up my mind. Was it a long time or not? Ah, uh, Sam Lenz. How old was he then? I just, uh, because now all of the kids, the kids that were at the bunker, they are not kids anymore. So as we add more darks in here, now we're, we can start to think about going the other way with this. Let's do the other other way here. Let's get some lights going into this. Here we've got uh, another one of these guys out. This is where it starts to get interesting because we're going to this is another one of our little sayings here, right? You can uh, thin oils. You can't dilute them because even at practically 95% thinner, cadmium yellow, still cadmium yellow. Like this right here, those uh, the glowing eyes and the skulls right there, that was just a glaze or a pin line wash of cadmium yellow. Well, bye-bye, Sakamoto. You saw the Lizard Men, right, and the Tomb Kings? You've seen those guys. Though the, the Lizard Men, that was my first, uh, first Warhammer army back in the day. Ye old Lizard Men. Let's really go strong here with the... There we go. Now we'll back out of that a little bit here. And let's start to establish some flaminess here. Yeah, Lizardmen were my first army. I think I played them in 
what was it, five or six tournaments or so? And then the Tomb Kings, well, they only ever made it to one tournament because then they got, well, Tomb Kinged, like, immediately afterwards. Within months of finishing the Tomb Kings army and playing one tournament with it, then Sigmar came along, and that was the end of the Tomb Kings. We're going to bring in some more of our... Here, let's get some more of our light glow here like we do we need some on this skelly friend over here boy I can't uh, when's the last time I, I think about 2014 that was probably that was the end of the Warhammer experience try doing Kings of War to try and get the Tomb Kings alive again. That uh, didn't work out so well. Now we, we've come, we put the darks in there. Now we're starting to bring our lights back into here. And you can see we're just kind of placing colors on here. We're not doing any mixing. We're just literally going, well, okay, yeah, we need some some of that light over here. Some of that over here. Actually, these horses here, these Diwali horses, they kind of remind me of Song of Ice and Fire horses. That The musculature on these is pretty darn good, I have to say. All right, where's our blending brush now? Let's grab this guy here. There we go. So once that happened... Well, and also, too, they closed down all the GW stores in the area, so there was really no impetus anymore. Uh, Lord of the Rings was my favorite game of the three by far. Really loved that. And But once that happened, I ended up, well, briefly with Flames of War, then ended up playing Bolt Action. I actually have four bolt action battle reports on the YouTube channel. And we are hoping soon enough, especially now that we're painting all of these Lord of the Rings armies, that we will have Lord of the Rings battle reports and lots of them on the YouTube channel. And I mean a lot of them. So here we're going to be using that cadmium scarlet minus that fuzz. think we can, yeah, let's uh, get a little bit of our orange glow here onto his neck. Just a smidge there. And this is why I was just saying the, the other day, that's why I did that, that recent video using no fluorescent paints, just the cadmium scarlet. If you can't find the fluorescents, you can you can definitely find cadmium colors. They are everywhere. So many different companies make those. That you'll be able to find. That as nice as it is to have the fluorescents, they are most certainly not a necessary thing. And we're gonna think we're going to say these are these are metal surfaces there so I think we need to also capture some more light there yeah I th think even maybe that fold there just a smidge more now what I will try to do is I've got the cipher lords we're going to try and get the Ossiarchs to a point where we could actually do some war cry with the Ossiarchs. So that's another thing that I'm hoping to be able to do battle reports with is the with the Ossiarchs there and the Cypher Lords kind of combining two great tastes that go together. A little bit of Zinch and a little bit of, well, I'm going to say Tomb Kings. Even though they're not Tomb Kings, 
I'm going to say they are. So again, just trying to get that, that glow working. Now I am really quickly here. It's uh, on a couple of these bases here. I'm just going to get that uh, base covered up as, as quickly as I can here. So just bear with me for one second while we get that covered up. Because that's going to be kind of important here. Just to see what I have light and dark wise. So I'm just going to get these uh, couple of these bases covered up here. Where's our other one? This one here. Let's get you covered up as well. Yeah. It gets a little bit distracting when you have something that's the same gray next to it. This lets me know, okay, I don't really need to go any lighter with the rock right there. One last base here. We'll just hit that. And see, all of a sudden, my lights, or my, my rocks look lighter because, well, you must have dark to show light. Sometimes it's a just painting your base. <laughs> That's all it takes. Okay, good enough. Now we can go back to this guy here. I do have to remember to clean that, though, because unlike oil paints, yeah, leaving that acrylic paint sitting in the brush, not the greatest idea, not a good plan. I'm also going to find one of my other blending brushes here, a slightly bigger one. Here, we'll grab a couple of these guys out here. Almost got them. Let's grab you. And you can see just uh, some soft bristles here. And now we're just going to scumble along the edges here. Let's see how that just uh, gives you a nice soft blend right there. We'll do the same here. But there has to be no paint on that brush to make sure all the paint is gone off of there. We'll do the same over here on this back leg. That's where we're just kind of dropping the paint, right? Knowing that we're going to mix that. Almost there. Boy, I'm, I'm looking at the musculature on this horse, and it is very much like the musculature on these horses right here. And you can go back and watch all of these episodes here. we got lots and lots of cavalry here on the channel. I mean, this is, this ain't the cavalry channel for nothing. Yes, it is the cavalry channel. We're certainly going to start getting some lighter fire colors in here. And again, the Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye, Sakamoto. Fly, fly, you fools. Ganja has been sparked. Don't burn all the ganja. But thank you so much for that follow. And Thowler, how you doing? Nice to see you. Uh, did you get to see all the way to the end? I did not get to see all the way to the end of Stila's 12-hour uh, stream there. Wasn't sure if you had a chance to watch it all. No, you had to take off early too, didn't you? I think you had to take off early as well. I think she still had maybe an hour and 15 minutes left or something. Oh, I like to say bye-bye, Sakamura. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I love terrain as well. I uh, absolutely love terrain. That's, a, that's one of the reasons why I like bolt action in Lord of the Rings, because terrain is a pretty crucial thing in both of those games. Well, actually, Warcry is too, if I remember correctly. It's uh, I was... Watching battle reports in early 2020 to learn the game, to play it. So I'm going to have to start watching battle reports again and kind of relearn it a bit. But I just I really enjoy the heck out of terrain. And those two systems really feature it pretty well. 
we could certainly use some lighter colors here around that skull. Let's do that here. Flaming Skull is from Green Stuff World, but you could definitely do the effect yourself. It's the same way we sculpted the flame on this sword right here. It was just the Liquitex Heavy Gel. Same stuff we use for icicles, same stuff we use for water effects. The Anna Thelwer, she must have uh she must have gone through a lot of makeup sponges there. She showed me a little pile that she had. I think she was actually worried she might even run out at a certain point. And yes, we're still gonna go lighter with the skull here. Oh, we haven't uh we haven't begun to get the light on this guy yet. We're only just kind of getting started, although I do see something here that's going to get some of our... That's the brown matter, maybe a smidge of some cadmium red in there. Okay, that's better. Yeah, there was a a little bit of a gap right there. We don't need a gap. Don't want that. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much, Fremen. I appreciate that. And Gandalf does too. Hello, little hobbits. Oh no! Don't don't let it spark your ganja. Oh come, dude, man, come on. That just smells terrible. It's making the cat's eyes water. Yeah, let's bring in a couple of our. Not just darks here, but cooler darks. That's a little bit of indigo right here. Oh yeah, that's uh that's the thing about the oil paint too, is that you can really establish some serious darks with the oils in no time flat. Really some serious oils. Or some serious darks. Now look at the that and here is our little comparison or speaking of war cry, we'll bring out the Where's our one murder chicken here that we always like to show? There you are. Compared to this. So this was painted with acrylics. You can watch this on the YouTube channel. Literally the brightest acrylic colors that are out there that you can actually get. And then you compare it to this. And oh my goodness, look at the difference. This is just going to win every time as far as luminosity. The other one has never seen sunlight. It has not been faded. That's just how intense the oil colors are in comparison. Uh, seeing is believing. I am so glad that we ended up with those two so that people could literally see the comparison side by side of what we're talking about here. Get our more darks right in there. Ah, back here too. Oh yeah, and now this will be darker glaze there, just to get in a little more shadow there. That's going to look brighter now as a result of that. Hey, Zip Zap Wrap, how you doing? Uh, Thaler, that is from, well, I guess it's the old the starter box, but that is from the Untamed, uh, it's from Warcry. Uh, it used to be in the original starter box that had the Untamed Beasts and the Iron Golems, I think. But uh, those are kind of neutral critters that I guess can run around and attack either side or sometimes join either side. I think they're just in some of the scenarios. They're not in every single scenario, I don't think. They're they're in some of the scenarios. Oh, Zip Zap, we brought back a couple of colors. That was kind of the, the point there, was to bring back some of the older ones. Uh, so raw umber, we've been using a lot of raw umber. And we've been trying to get the Payne's Gray back in here just to kind of show folks. To, well, I haven't used them in a long time. And this one's got a lot of the raw umber in it right here. A lot of the raw umber there. 
Ah, Grey Wolf Studio just came in time to see the usual sort of hilarity that takes place here. Hilarity and mayhem. It's all the usuals, right, Grey Wolf Studio? Now, of course, uh, there's there's a new character to our cast of characters there. That's Jeeves and Worcester right there. And, and there's a size comparison. So, yeah. We painted these guys, what, last Saturday? Yeah, this was last Saturday, so go back and watch that. That was really fun. Now, there is a ton of indigo right there on those rocks. Lots of indigo. Yeah, Zip Zap. Uh, basically, I'm using it the same way I use the... Oh, gosh, what is that? The Burnt Umber. So I actually I basically dry brushed it over the top here of the wolf to try and darken this stuff down. And we've mixed it with the, the white, obviously, right, to get it a little bit more on the opaque side as well. Here, let's get some more. We got more darks on our horsey here. And then we're going to come back in there with some of our greens too, but we need to dive into some of our lighter yellows is here. Let's do that. Let's really get some exciting light colors on especially on the base down here. Let's really light up this, this side of that skull. And then we're going to have to darken down the other side. And that uh, zip zip, it also has a tendency to be on the glossy side too. So all of those things are that stuff that just... Uh, tends to reduce the um, the usage of it for sure especially that whole glossy thing that is just not super helpful yeah let's uh take a little bit of our cadmium red. we'll mix that in with a little bit of the brown matter there and let's make sure we get inside the eyes of our skelly friend right there And let's just get some darks going right like so. There we are. So you must have dark to show light. By even just getting the shadows on this side over here, it's encouraging us to believe that just on the other side of that, that fiery glow is that much more of a glow to it. Hey, big chat and colonial scale modeler. How you doing? Nice to see you. Hopefully you had fun uh, watching uh, Stila's 12-hour stream there. Hopefully she's still alive. We were we were having a little bit of a a laugh there about the. Uh, I think at one point she made the mistake of I could just stream for another 12 hours and. A whole bunch of the folks in the chat there started calling for a 24-hour stream. So, Big Chit, I hope you're doing good. Thank you so much. Uh, we've actually been working on all 3D printed stuff here. So here's some of our... These are from the Printing Goes Ever On, some of their warg writers here. We did the usual. You know, slap on our colors for the pre-glaze, wiped them off, started to add some details in there, and then poof. We've got ourselves a very nice little warg rider there with a little bit of a casualty. So these are all digitally or 3D printed here. Now I I added some robes on these last night, but it's the uh, 3D printing stuff there. And this also was a 3D printed here. Well, what I want to get is some greens in this here. And we'll just take something like this, just a smidge of that green go in there. And it's almost, I don't know, maybe a bit more turquoise like instead.
Yeah, I don't know if she was able to get that completely done or not. I wasn't quite sure if she was going to maybe even keep on going till it was done. But uh, she seemed to be enjoying the heck out of it. And, well, those Artisan Guild figures, they do have some really nice shapes. And she loves those nice open shapes like that. It really, especially with the oils, is really fun to paint those. And that's uh, one of the reasons I was starting later here today is because we're, I think there's going to be a bunch of Artisan Guild uh, files coming this way that I'll be able to mess around with. That should be very fun. So now we're, we're working. Look at how cool this side is versus this side right here. Alex Colonial Space Mile. I just uh, I love doing the object source lighting because it really just sets such a nice story. And you can you can see even without all of the the color effects, right? The the color contrast of the blue versus the uh, orange and such, you can still see there's definitely some lighting going on. And we're also going to get some of this cooler, lighter, well, more of a mid tone here. But again, it's it's very much a dry brush. We don't have any liquid on there. We have paint on there, but definitely not having any liquid on that brush. The other crazy th effect of the object source lighting is it almost makes the it makes this tiny little figure seem bigger. Yeah, because we did the, a very similar thing right here. Obviously, we're starting to work our way up towards this one here. And even, well, something like this with more of a green glow. So all of this stuff here just, it looks like there's more depth to it just because we hit it with that, that lighting. There's just something about the lighting effects. And I think you've seen the Moria army, right, where we did the object source lighting on the entire army. We're going to be doing the same thing with our Khazadum dwarves, the exact same thing. Can't wait for that. They're even going to go on the same bases as the Moria Dwarves because, well, it's all Moria. And let's see, where's our, you know, let's get our Moria army out here. Once I'm almost there, here we are. There's our Moria army right there. Poof. The optic source lane, those little nasty 20 year old goblins there, it really spices them up with just a little bit of object source lighting and i think that was about uh, well let's see we've done two saturday shows on just mass amounts of object source lighting on uh, an army hello little hobbits spark my ganja thank you so much uh so sexy as grandma hello little ho oh no the ganja's been sparked fly fly you fools uh brown capades uh Oh, thanks, thanks, uh, Brown Capades here. Let me see. Uh, yeah, Colonial Scale, the, as we like to say, film noir has value. <laughs> film noir definitely has value. Now, what we're going to also do here, I think, is we're going to take some of our asphaltum here. Maybe even a smidge of that olive green. And now we're going to do a little bit of our pin line wash things here. Almost trying to get a little bit of weathering in on this. Here, let's, uh, there we go. We're sort of relying on the translucency of that brown right there. Gonna get some darks here and that sword handle. And we need just uh, some browns in general around here. Just uh, something to take it off of all of that light blue. This is where we're gonna start to employ our, yes, olive green because uh, Believe it or not, there's a lot of green on that horse skin right there. So Bronca uh, Sal says, uh, 
Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, let's make it a little bit lighter, maybe. Boy, there there's some really decent musculature, I gotta say, on this on this horse here. Now the other uh, it's kind of like a weather top type of a thing here Lent from Diwali. But look who's back. Look who's back. It's Wicked Mini Painting. Wicked Mini Painting, how are you doing? Thank you so much for that raid. And folks, be sure to give Wicked Mini Painting a follow because, well, we want to support all of our fellow streamers. So Wicked Mini Painting, how are you doing? For all the new folks coming in. As usual, we're having some fun with our oils. We're painting up a whole bunch of 3D prints, prints that I actually made myself. Yes, I was able to make them myself. So we've got some of these warg writers here from The Printing Goes Ever On. We hit them with our pre glaze with the oils. We wiped away with the sponge, started to work in some of our lighter colors then. And here is uh, our first one here that we finished off and now we're into a Diwali miniatures or I think it's Diwali miniatures maybe this is one of their dark riders one of their ring rates right here ah, I just ordered your oils waiting for them to show up ah, wicked mini painting I th I hope that they're fun for you now have you got some just some miniatures in mind just something obviously something with those nice big surfaces right and uh, Maybe even just a kind of a uh, limited palette. I, I don't even like using the word limited palette, but you know where we're going with that. I think... Oh, hey, Drippins. Nice to see you again, Drippins. Gee whiz, sorry I missed you there. And Space Nifty. Space Nifty, how are you doing? Yeah, oh, and uh, tomorrow is going to be very exciting here because... Uh, we got more of these have been printed out. I think I got like four of these that are curing, and there's another set that's also in the printer, which is actually probably done right now. I mean, there's just so many fabulous things here. We're going to try and basically put together as many dwarves as we can to be painting tomorrow on the stream, and those are all prints that I made myself. Ah, uh, we could. Wicked Mini Painting, it's the same stuff that I use for my acrylics. It's just the Army Painter Anti-Shine because I can just brush this stuff on. It's the, We've used that stuff for years and years and years. Absolutely love it. It is fantastic. Yeah, once the oils are cured, they're just paint. And it covers covers those really nice. If there is any sort of a gloss left over or whatever... It gets, it certainly gets rid of that, no doubt about it. And we talked about making some of our flames a little bit lighter, right? We're going to do that here. Just had to let that paint set a little more there. Yeah, Wicked Mini Painting, it's, uh, it, that stuff is fantastic because there's zero days here that are okay for spraying anything outside. And we use that for years with our acrylics. And it's just nice to know that it also works with the oils because, well, you know, once they're dry, that stuff is just paint. That's all. And it works really well with the oils. I'm just going to try and find some more flame effects here around our burning skull. Uh, let's see. I don't think we're all caught up then. So thank you so much for that raid, Wicked Mini Painting. If you got any <coughs> any pictures or whatever of stuff that you've been working on lately on Insta or something like that, feel free to drop those into the chat there so people can know what you've been working on, what sort of fun things. I know you just got done with your stream, so you pretty much don't have any pictures right now. I know I certainly wouldn't. Ah, excellent, excellent. <clears throat> so yeah, go ahead and uh, chuck those in there. 
And hopefully you had yourself a productive session. If not, at least uh, fun, because sometimes the things can be pretty active and you have a whole bunch of fun, but maybe not quite as much production. So just uh, diving into the orange right there. There's a lot of grassy type stuff here. I want to get some of that orange out there. We're going to take some of our cadmium scarlet here. Hit this right along the outer edge of that. We might, uh, at a certain point, we might come back and even do a little bit of a glaze of some somewhat darker color. That might be a little too dark right there, so I think we're going to lighten that up with some of our cadmium scarlet. Yep. Uh, the old uh, a Space Marine bike. Now, did you, uh, was it a create your own faction or was it a, a standard faction there? Because I'm still trying to collect Ossiarch bits and stuff so that I can do my own custom uh, little Space Marine chapter type thing. Because, you know, that is def. I, well, that's kind of how I always have done things. Basically, always staying away from whatever is standard. So just throwing a little bit of red here, and that's the cadmium red deep. That's a that's a color that we just don't see very often. I don't. Really, I'm trying to think the last time I used it. It's been a while for sure. That's another one that might also have a little bit of the, uh, a glossiness to it when it dries. Ah, Blood Angels sub-faction, the Flesh Tears. Yeah, there's just something about making your own Space Marine chapter. It's kind of fun. You can sort of make your own story about it and such. Well, it's... Uh, what I've always enjoyed most about the armies is the stories behind them. So again, just giving that a little bit of a hint of red over there. That, that's all. That's all it is. And we'll just we'll wait for some of that to cure a little bit before we go back in there. So speaking of going back, let's grab our sort of bluish gray color here. Doing some kind of mid-tones on our horsey here. And maybe some more lights. I mean, light is relative. This is not, uh, that's not white by any stretch of the imagination. Now, did you have any uh, sort of special basing for that? Because I know sometimes it's it's fun to throw one of those bikes on something that kind of makes it look like it's sort of going off kilter a little bit, or it's it's leaning over, right? Instead of just kind of like they're out for a Sunday drive or whatever. That's the other thing that I want to do with those bikes is try and come up with a interesting sort of a base. Maybe they're going through water or something like that. And, and the water is being kicked out from either side of the, the wheels or something. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different here. Let's grab some of this almost like a yellowish green there. Now let's see if we can do some glint of light <coughs> on our horse's armor here. Some things that maybe don't necessarily involve the object source lighting. Much fun as that is. Yeah, this is... Uh, there's, there is a part of me, though, that wishes uh, 
everybody did stuff the way the printing goes ever on does where it's all modular because it'd be really fun to just have this horse now it's neat having the dark rider on there too that uh that that's great but boy it'll be really fun to just have this horse all by itself I think I could use this for a whole bunch of different projects. I love to have this horse by itself. I suppose I'm going to look at the way this is. You know, I could I suppose it could be possible just sort of saw him off of there at the waist maybe. Ah, dark initiative. How did that orc know what a menu was? Well, I think think he was probably well let's see maybe they broke into uh maybe they they strayed too close to the shire and they wandered into a they wandered into a pub or something either that or there might be some kind of a fungus restaurant or something like that <laughs> who knows wasn't there there's like a whole apparently there's a whole bunch of people that are actually held prisoner on the plains of Golgoroth or something like that and they're the ones that make all the food for all the orcs because uh, orcs really aren't too big into farming I hear so I think it was a whole bunch of humans that are just like <laughs> that's what they do is they're just slaves and they make all the food so here that's where we did that little glaze of the that was the S full tone mixed with a little bit of our. I think there's a little bit of olive green in that too, and then it. Uh, boy, you can look at that. It really does look now sort of weathered. The S full tone is definitely one of those colors that does not dry glossy. That does not dry glossy whatsoever. Here, let's see what we can do on the on the sword over here. Give it a little bit of a glinting edge there. On this side too, maybe. Okay, what are we what do we want to do here? That is actually, you know what? I'm just gonna hit it first. Let's first let's hit it with this. Uh, Asgard rising, uh uh, do what now? The other, unfortunately, with the Asgard Rising stuff, it's got that heroic, well, it's really got the heroic scale. I mean, it's, Hello, uh... Hello, little hobbit! Spark my ganja! <laughs> thank you so much for that follow, Jay. Jay Singamers, thank you so much for that. Oh, and oh my goodness, the ganja's been sparked. Either that or the beacons are lit. What, what, what beacons? What are we talking about? So yeah, do what now? They're uh, they're just too beefy, unfortunately, for Lord of the Rings. And you know how you know how tiny their stuff is. I mean, even here. Well, I think they did scale that horse pretty well, but most of the time, sadly, well, even Reaper stuff is just too big and beefy for Lord of the Rings. And it's it's kind of a bummer because there's some Asgard things that could work for Lord of the Rings, but the scale, unfortunately, it's really hard to match. Keep on a regular basis. Uh, having too high can cause a problem for me. The line of sight of easier. Yeah, that is, uh, well, <laughs> another reason why we sort of got away from that. Just because of that whole line of sight thing. But uh, do what now? The because uh, the Asgard, right? Don't they have a whole bunch of terrain, right? Really like their track. Actually, on the miniatures, uh, we've painted a bunch of them, haven't we? Do what now on the stream here? Now, that's that's not to say I won't be using them for a certain little project maybe that I'm working on for myself. Where I've got some of the old Keltos miniatures, which are also heroic scale. So I think those would work really well with the Asgard Rising figures. Yeah, being that that same sort of extra gigantic heroic scale with the big big hands and big heads. 
Ah, Space Nifty. And Jay, just the chill in there with the painting. Well, this is less chilly. This is a little bit more toasty right here. A little more toasty, but still fun. Yeah, what the heck. I'll let a little bit more of the orange work its way out here. Yeah, do what? Now, they have... Uh, do they have any actual buildings at all? I know they have a lot of standing stones and barricades and that sort of stuff. I wasn't sure if they had any actual, like that, like some build, like some long houses or something. Did don't they have like a boat or something? Maybe they have a boat. But I'll I'll never forget the first. Uh, 40k tournament that I did and it was kind of one of those laser pointer incidents where they shine it through five different things and they say well I can see that two millimeters of the corner of that banner therefore I can shoot that entire unit and that's like oh okay that's that's how this is going to be I'm going to try and get just a smidge more definition along here, and then I think we're also going to use our, where's our blending brush here? There you are. And uh, we don't want this hard line here. So all we're going to do is just scumble away at the edge of that. Breaks it up nicely. There we go. Like so. And now we've got ourselves uh, some sheeting right there to make our lights look lighter without having to necessarily lighten the heck out of them. We will jump over here. And this is always the interesting thing about the cadmium scarlet. Even though it looks darker on the palette, boy, you get it on the miniature, and suddenly it is so much lighter. It's because of the intensity of it, for sure. Man, do what? Now, it's kind of uh, when I, I realize just how many of those I've painted. And I think we've, we've painted probably a good maybe 10 or 12 of them on stream, even. Now, of course, unfortunately, those were prints done by somebody else. Uh, the, the person who had me doing those, he's got his own printer now. So I think uh, any other Asgard stuff that I get is going to be significantly improved as far as the print quality goes. Maybe not quite so many of the gigantic divots from the, from the supports and such. So we're getting our, our toasty colors on here. Making use of our cadmium yellow, our cadmium scarlet here. Cadmium orange is on its way. I don't know exactly when it's going to get here, but I think it'll make a hopefully a nice little substitute for the fluorescent orange. And that oh, it looks like uh, Kathy's heading off to sleep times here. She has a dog. So good night to Kathy. Everybody says good night. And there might be some more on the bed, too. <laughs> there might be just a few. All right, here on our horsey, I'm going to go, I think, with some more. Yeah, I'm going to grab this green over here. And we're going to take cadmium yellow here little bit of the umber in there and we'll hit the reins and bridle over here yeah I think uh, she's she's headed off now to sleepy times I think she was playing oh speaking of uh, well Viking themed stuff she was I think playing 
What that Valheim? Yeah, she was playing Valheim again, I believe. Now we're just like our we'll see over here. I'm gonna grab some of that indigo here. Let some of that orchid's its way onto the fur here. This is the whole painting black without painting black, right? Because no kidding, there's no black here. Didn't use any black on this. We've used a whole bunch of other stuff, uh, none of which is black. Which means we're going to have a lot more interesting things for a viewer to look at. See, we just kind of mindlessly, what well, looks like mindlessly, just throw some color on there and then time for the blending brush to come along. Yes, it, it blends the colors, but it also does some work on the brush stroke management side of things. And we talk about that because people, they'll say, hey, what, what's going on? I got all these brush strokes and stuff. That has a lot to do with them literally clutching the brush like they're trying to snap it in half instead of a more relaxed approach like this. Also, keeping the hands away from that metal ferrule. Further away your hand, hands are from that ferrule, you're going to get a much lighter touch on that brush, and you're going to just be wiping off a whole lot less paint. So that is very important to keep in mind. Go back over here to the as full tum and we're going to try and get some oh, and also the burnt umber where's my burnt umber I'll just grab one of these guys right here something like this speaking of some dry brushing we're going to get this on the edges of his cloak here to almost make it look like it's got some uh, dirt on it there not necessarily, but kind of. And then we'll also maybe get some of that on the horse's legs, too. Again, very much a dry brush here. Because people say, man, I can't get burnt umber to stick at all. If I had a whole bunch of thinner in this, None. All this is going to do is wipe away the colors that are here. It's not going to. Nothing's going to stick on here. In fact, it's going to wipe everything away. We don't want that. We want colors to stick there. And now it does. Again, by virtue of less paint on that brush. And I might even. Go back in here with a couple of more darks. Let's take some of our, well, let's just use some Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is another one of those that sort of fell out of flavor because it just had a tendency to be on the glossy side of things. The indigo was way more potent. You can actually go back and watch a Twitch session from a while back where I, I literally painted two figures in, one in Payne's Gray, one in indigo just to kind of see well what what's the actual difference now I've done some patreon videos to show that where we actually were mixing some color swatches of it but this was a kind of a specific sort of a miniature challenge and the results seeing the results of that just kind of well sort of a relegated uh, the pains gray to secondary status unfortunately we're gonna go into a, maybe a little bit of our reds over here. almost like a magenta in some places here it's gonna be and I'm gonna grab a little bit of the indigo over here there we go kind of a dirty magenta color I don't know it's the time for food and painting food is optional yes mr. them Food is definitely optional. Painting is not. Painting is a must. Painting is a painting is life. Must be painting. So yeah, we're actually throwing some magenta type color in here. Just to keep things interesting. And Colonial Scale Modeler has to head out. Yeah, it's uh, almost 11 o'clock here. 
So thanks again, Colonial Scale Modeler. And tomorrow, probably starting somewhere between 4 and 4.30, is when we'll have the mass uh, painting here of the dwarves. So, yep, lots of dwarves going on there. We'll uh, try and throw those guys on their bases and, and get them going. Just like we threw these guys on some bases real quick right here. Probably going to be very similar to these guys. Uh, you, you can't go wrong with the bark and branch method of basing. So here we, we throw a little bit of the magenta in there. And it's it's all relative, right? It's not it is not actually any kind of pink or whatever. It's just kind of a dark, dirty, reddish purple in some ways. Yeah, just trying to chuck some nice dark colors down into the recesses there. I'm thinking ah, uh, see that's uh, I think that's mostly. At the very top there, I'm, I'm going to say that that is actually blocked from the firelight a little bit. Yep, I'm thinking his cloak, arm, whatever is going to block some of that light that's coming in. So why don't we then here grab some of the indigo on the opposite side of this right here. Tightens up that line. It's that uh, un universal cartoon signature for glass, right? The, the three lines, those three hard lines. It, uh, we talk about color contrast and, well, value contrast, saturation contrast, all that kind of stuff, color temperature contrast. Cannot forget edge contrast. It's a thing. It is definitely a thing. Well, thank you so much, Colonial Scale Model. Oh, and look at there's a uh, Wicked Mini with the bike. So, folks, be sure to go check out Wicked Mini's bike there. Oh, here's our Fanchion Red. Because I think we can get some red for the eyes here. On our horse, then we'll do our, our darker stuff around the outside of that. One more. Da ah, there's our cadmium scarlet in there. Doing some work. There we go. Very nice. Go back over here to the olive green. At this point, not really going to look green, but we could use some some dark over here, I think. Yeah, there's just too much light happening there. And then maybe even a little bit of a semi-glaze of asphaltum here. A little bit of a pin line wash there. So folks, go check out Wicked Mini Painting, what they just posted. Can't work in that. There we go. So I think now we have a little more contrast going on there. I just was looking at that going, eh, not really enough. I think we need to do the same right here. Any brush can be a blending brush. Even one of these little tiny triple zeros right here. And for the most part, we're using things like these synthetic Cotman's right here. Get these on Dick Blick. They are definitely much cheaper. These, it says Sable on there, but it's really not a Sable. It's just kind of eh. But also not super expensive, so it, it does the trick. All right, this actually has a little bit of that almost magenta color in it right here. Yeah, drippings, they're really amazing, right? And we got a, we just got a whole bunch more. We've been trying to stock up here. And there's your, your quadruple zero. 
and they're what three dollars uh, between three dollars and three dollars thirty cents on Dick Blick, but they just they take a lot of punishment. I mean, they just take a beating, a major beating, and they just kind of they just keep going. Boy, this is a this looks like a highlight on here. Here, let me just grab this and put it next to a lighter coat. Look at how dark that is, but yet it looks almost like a highlight on here. Uh, Drippins is using one right now. I'm just, uh, we've been using Cotman's forever, too. We've been using them since, gosh, 2002, 2003. Been using them for a good long time. Uh, they mix in some Ganlin, Kanakano Magenta. Yeah, Grey Wolf. I wonder if there's a difference between that and the the uh, Windsor Newton version here. Of course, it's going to be hard for me to find that one because whenever I want one of those, it's always gone. No, it's definitely over here. There, nope, that's not it either. But. Sometimes the Konakonom, like the, uh, was it the Van Dyke Brown, was very different than the Van Dyke Brown of the Windsor Newton. So I wonder if there's uh, any difference between the two. I'm going to try and go a little bit lighter with this here. And again, we're actually, we're mixing it on the miniature itself. We're not... We're not doing any layering. Hashtag no layers, not with the oils. Don't have to. I am going to try and throw a little bit of a edge light along the bridle right here. And then right there, reflected light, maybe a touch more. so that's more like it now we've got this the reddish brown color that will kind of use that for the bridle and such here a little bit on the reins to hit it on this side too I think that is the horse's mane there. Let's see if we can't get some kind of ambient light on this instead of only the object source lighting. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, no, I can't just <laughs> can't get an entire collection of both of them just to compare them like that. But I'm always curious as to why there is a difference between them. Like, say, the, the Windsor Newton Van Dyke Brown, some folks have said, is almost more like Gamlin Burnt Umber. <laughs> now, I don't know, maybe Gamlin Burnt Umber is also just much darker than Windsor Newton Burnt Umber. It could be. I had anticipated with the oils that there would be a lot more Synch uh, synchronized between the the paints from different companies, but the there are definitely different processes. Just like the the Williamsburg paints, they're different. I couldn't tell you what it is in their process. It's well, it says handmade. I guess that's a difference. But the other people that have used the Williamsburg, they notice it too. Right away. I'll just say, yeah, that's uh, that color is not just diazonine purple. That is a very different thing. I think I could maybe even get this to be a smidge lighter here. So yeah, we're not going to layer this at all. We're just going to take some of these lighter colors here. We'll just throw them right on top of these muscles and raised surfaces. And then we'll just hit those with a blending brush like we've done before. Blending brush time. 
Uh, so Colonial Scale Modeler, you have a good night there, and hopefully we see it tomorrow when we go to do our all of our dwarves there. I'll, I'll see if I can have some that are not just the Iron Hills motif there. Uh, let's see, anything else? Nope, oh, we're all caught up there. Now, oh, I want to get some light up there, some dark on the other side of it. So let's take just something that is going to be lighter, like this. A little bit lighter version of that magenta there. I think the horse even has a lower lid on the eye. So let's see if we can't get that as well. Something on the ear. And again, just thinking that is part of the main. I think we might be able to also get some lighter stuff going on with our, our flaming skull here. Let's get our brilliant yellow pail here. Can we, okay, that's. Uh, I was hoping that was all going to be centered for you guys. Get using that quadruple zero here. Uh, we'll keep going with this. I just realized we've got the the nose of the skull there. There probably should be some glow there. Also here where the the teeth probably I'm gonna see if I can't reach the brush. I know you're not gonna be able to see it, unfortunately, but that still needs to be there where that flame is coming out of the skull there back to some of our lighter orangey yellow now I think we got it pretty good on the skull over there I don't think we Need to add too much more light to it, except maybe for back here. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much for that, fellow Alex Demon. That is appreciated. Hello, little hobbits. Oh no, the, the ganja has been sparked. I must fly. So, thank you so much. Yeah, Grey Wolf Studio. I think the. Uh, can't they still had a tube of quinacrino magenta? It was a Windsor Newton one from when she was in art school many moons ago and you know, it's still good it still works just fine it was just really hilarious to see that old tube there that's altered man art it has been very interesting working on the the warwick writers now how many did you end up painting all together there was it Seemed like it was about fourteen or fifteen of them, or something like that. It was it was quite the horde just of warg writers. Now this uh, should be very interesting to see in film noir. I'm just gonna throw a couple of indigo darks on here. This should be really interesting to see at this point. So we should be able to see our lighting effect, but you won't have that warm versus cool anymore because they're cool colors like this so see that difference there we go noir you still see the light down there but now no warm versus cool you see the same shading going on there and let's uh, rotate around a little bit slow so you can see definitely a lighting effect that's happening there oh let's uh bring out this one if we can here there we go Let's bring them both back. Get some of our color intensity back here. Boy, huge difference. And again, that the cooler color over here. And by cooler, it's, look, there's greens there. There's still some yellow in there. But 
cadmium yellow light is a very cool warm color so I'm gonna have to figure out some motif here for our wind riders we're gonna have to figure out something to do there so that we can also have some object source lighting on them because uh, that would be very fun all right on our face over here we talked about well getting some darks here and I could have also had the Egyptian violet out there that would have been nice to have because it's such an intense also dark color speaking and that would have been really nice around this edge right here but we'll just we'll go with the indigo here what we got So the darker that is, I think the lighter the eye is going to be instead of trying to lighten the eye that much more. Also going to try and darken down the metal on the horse's head. And we'll start to maybe find a couple of other lights here, maybe even on the cloak and by light I mean something that's sort of a dingy gray <laughs> that's uh, by no means anything that is white it can be a little bit difficult with the oils because you you're, it's wet paint so it's just gonna kind of look glossy it is not actually glossy it's just uh, the paint is wet. If you had thrown, you throw acrylic paint on a miniature, right? And as it's drying, it just it looks kind of glossy because the paint is wet. It's the, the same sort of thing that's happening here. I think we could maybe use almost like a sort of a tarnished gold here or something. Well, I know gold doesn't really tarnish, but something that looks like gold but not quite like gold pop some more light onto this so getting these uh, quadruple zeros that I just found by accident the other day I was looking for I think I was just looking to get some continents to uh, replace the quadruple zeros there and well I know what caught my eye is that they were half Hello, price. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. That's what caught my eye. They were half price. And thank you so much for that follow. Yeah, let's get the step. Uh, Steph, thank you so much, Steph. Steph Lou. Steph Lou Lloyd, thank you very much for that follow. And he's like, uh, uh, dude, come on, man. Just cut us a break. Give us, give us the little guys. And we won't mess Hello, around with you. Hello, no little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Uh, Uzi Sooner says, fly, you fools. That was fast, Gandalf. Thank you so much, Ozzy. Not Uzi, Ozzy. That would, uh, I added a couple extra O's what there. Uh, spe uh, speaking of Lord of the Rings, look who we've got in the house here. We got ourselves Ben. Ben, how are you doing? Folks, be sure to give Ben a follow. Because Ben's got some really, oh, and 3D printed too. So, yes, uh, all of these are printed files here. And we've been working from files from the printing goes ever on. So some warg writers, we hit them with our pre-glaze. Started wiping that off, started to add lighter colors. Came up with a, something like this right here. And now this is from Duval miniatures or Deval games. I can't remember which one it is, but a little bit of a dark rider going on. It, uh, ben, this, I thought this was the Cavalry channel. I thought it was the Lord of the Rings channel. It's also a 3D printing channel now, right? Because guess what happens tomorrow? Yeah. I don't know, upwards of a dozen of these guys, maybe some infantry too. I mean, just uh, a whole bunch of goat riders here. All kinds of fun stuff. Uh, Lots of goatses, and we also have some infantry here. There's another thing of this uh, that's curing. There's another, well, that I'm sure the print is done now. But yeah, lots of 3D printing. 
So folks, be sure to go give Ben a follow up because Ben's got some really spectacular busts. So Ben, the, the uh, I almost said Frodo, the Bilbo bust is really looking fantastic. And yeah, the, the, he's got some really amazing busts over there, Lord of the Rings themed. You definitely want to go watch him as he's painting those. And I'll uh, Ben, if you want to uh, chuck your uh, Instagram pics of those in into the chat there, go ahead. Feel free to get those in there so people can see. Go visit your Instagram there and uh, see what you got going on. Ah, you finished off the Gandalf today. Uh, what what scale are those? Would you say about I don't know one one tenth or something like that maybe one tenth scale. But they look fantastic. They look absolutely fantastic. Now it's starting to get, I can see a little bit of a reddish color out there on the end. Yeah, definitely go give Ben the follow. Because I think you'll really love watching what he's doing. It, it's fantastic. Super, super quality paint work going on. And those are definitely amazing busts, no doubt about it. This is some indigo over here. Oh, what the heck. We'll throw a little Payne's gray in there. Yeah, so actually using Payne's gray for the first time in months. Using the raw umber for the first time in well over a year. No doubt about it. It's been good grief. It's probably closer to a year and a half the last time we actually had raw umber out on the palette. Uh, about one tenth, and there. Oh, there's your Bilbo. There's the Bilbo. Uh, let's see. Yep, there we go. I'm gonna throw some more darks in here. Yeah, the three D printing side of things. Well, and of course, there's uh, there's stuff like this. Where last night we were we were adding some some cloaks here to some 3d printed stuff here's our other elf right there so yeah so where was where was the right arm when the left fold fell yeah that's what we said i just said that again dark in there that's also got a little indigo in there to make it even cooler dark over here and here as well now here we actually what we need is a, a little bit of dark light dark and here we're going to add just grab this kind of crazy yellowish green here and I'll just throw that right here we might even just use this as a blending brush even yeah so those are just uh, three little blobs right there no longer a blob so this is why we don't have to spend all kinds of time glazing and shading and all this other stuff we just take a lighter color slap it on there and then we just blend it all the way boom nice and easy you also really don't want to have too much thinner on the brush when you're doing that because well it's more likely to just wipe away the paint that you got sitting there as opposed to mixing with it so we always talk about that, well, the dry brush stuff, even though it's not really a dry brush. It just means there is no thinner on there whatsoever. I think we're all caught up. Oh, thanks, Ben. Well, we, uh, speaking of the left fold fell, that's uh, <laughs> all of our Royal Guard conversions here, just taking regular old plastic Riders of Rohan, giving them new plumes, changing their helmets around, and then right there. That was the, that's the special one right there. That's old nine folds because we actually had nine folds on his left shoulder in the space of uh, about an eighth of an inch. Yeah, we sculpted eight folds in, or nine folds in less than an eighth of an inch because that reasons. Why not? It was there. I might just let a little bit of 
lighter color get onto this. And you, you know, you can go look at references of ring rates or whatever. If you look at the pictures of the actual ring rates with the cloaks, yeah, they're black. I'm wearing a black sweatshirt right now, and I can certainly see other colors on there that are not black. I can certainly see plenty of lighter colors on there, not just black. And yes, there's been no black used on this at all, anywhere. Not a single shred of black on this guy. Everything else but that. So again, we're just going to throw in some lighter color there. We'll grab this to do our blending work here. Get back to this side again. Maybe throw some lights on the tail here. Do we need any more? What's going on up here with this thing? You could also... Now, I, I don't know what happened to my red ones here. Ah, I think I got one right over here. Is this one going to be bright enough? Yeah. Hopefully it's going to be bright enough. So you can see as we shine this on here, little little flashlight things here, different colors, right? So but now you can really see by using the green there. But that is one way you could even just take a picture while you have the while you've got the lights shining on that. Be a nice little object source lighting reference for you. We're using the cadmium scarlet right here. Because I just when I, I did uh, the shining light thing on here, I noticed, yeah, you know what? I need to actually get some some more light here on the underside of our horsey. So we'll do that now. Hey, Amish Stig, how are you doing? Now, having some fun here. We're well, obviously getting to paint a whole bunch of the 3D printed files, doing this really fun uh, Dark Rider here, Ring Wraith from Diwali Games, and we've done a whole bunch of wargs right here. We had a bunch of wargs going on from the printing goes ever on. And I'm really looking forward to taking these guys, printing out the warg at about 110% maybe, maybe 115, printing these guys out at about 85-ish or so, and then we'll have ourselves uh, uh, marauders. Yep. They have three little goblins riding on the back of them in some kind of a howdah of some kind. And then we've got ourselves a yet another basically free type of troop choice there instead of using a hideous fail cast. Uh, that's the other reason. Even if I had money to buy a dozen of the marauders, I wouldn't get them because they're hideous fine cast stuff. Well, and GW probably is out of stock anyway, but <laughs> let's say they're not out of stock, and let's say we have infinite amount of funds, still wouldn't get them because they're failed cast. Just ask Kathy about those, because she had to look through, and this is back in 2012 or something like that, she had to look through probably 10 blister packs to make one of those. So Amish Dick, I hope that you're having yourself a, a good Friday slash now Saturday. Well, it's almost Saturday morning here. It's 1127 here. I know for our friends in Australia and such, it's already afternoon there. In fact, uh, Melbourne, it might just be 127 or maybe even 227 in the afternoon, something like that. Oh man, I'm a stick that stuff. And and I remember when they first brought it out, it was supposed to be cheaper, it was supposed to be better, it was supposed to be all these things. Turned out to be more expensive, a whole lot worse. That stuff is and it's still terrible. It's still terrible to this day. And they still sell that stuff. 
All I can figure is that there's folks that just don't really know. When they get it, they think they're getting a plastic miniature, maybe. I don't know. They don't understand what fine cast is. At least they came up with a fantastic name because it let us have about a dozen different ways of saying it with the whole fail cast and, well, there was other stronger metaphors that we uh, we won't use. Back to some more lights here on that cloak. Oh, we could use some... I think we need some darks over here. So let's grab a little bit of our indigo here. Van Dyke Brown. I mean, you want dark. Black is not going to do it. Indigo, Van Dyke Brown, that is going to do it. Because that's actual color. Just like this cadmium scarlet over here on the palette looks lighter on the miniature than it does on the palette just because of its intensity. Well, the indigo and Van Dyke Brown, because of their intensity, their actual colors, they actually do provide, they just make it darker. So that is looking much darker because of that that blend of the blue and brown. Blue and brown together make black. Now we're going to just uh, try and get a whole bunch of nice reinforced lines here. I think uh, we have to do some of that on his foot now. Yeah, we need some armor on his foot there. I just noticed that. The one thing I, I noticed, though, about the Diwali miniatures is digging the miniature out of the support can be adventurous and challenging, to say the least. It can be a little bit more interesting than you might want it to be, but uh, things are well enough. Last night's print failed. Next generation to fit. Ah, ah, sorry to hear that, Amish Dig. Sorry to hear that. Now, of course, oh, I can only imagine when we when we try to start printing actual really large things. Now, that bust that I printed out, well, it was a sort of bust anyway, and it was hollowed out for the first time. I'm sure that was uh, very much a charming little preschool thing compared to some of the stuff that uh, you were trying to get printed out there. Because, well, eight hours... Here we're going to, uh, let's get a uh, touch more right there. Up here. So I wish you luck on this, this uh, new iteration here. I don't want to jinx it by saying anything because, yeah, the printer is listening to every word we say. You know that. Now, I'm going to stick that. That does not actually surprise me. Uh, this get well, of course, I had two of these and other stuff on the plate. This was almost seven hours, this guy here, to print out. And he's just a he's just a 28 mil Lord of the Rings scale ring wraith. So I can, I can definitely see that. Oh, yes, they, they smell fear. They they smell they can they know the animosity too. And well, Landress has been kind enough to print up. I think he said eleven pairs of wings. And this is the other advantage of the three D printing, right? He literally just printed wings, nothing else. As much as I love the riders and everything, well, now that I have eleven pairs of wings, a I can put a pair on Prinkles. Yes, that's what we're gonna call him, not Prinkles, because it can never be two Prinkles. But instead of sculpting all these wings, I could have just printed out wings, sculpted the, the main body of the eagle, and then just stuck the wings on there. You know, yeah, that would have been way easier. Oh, my goodness. Shows what I know. Ah, original applesauce. Epson printers are satanic. They are absolutely satanic because back in the 2D art days, that's what I did was make, I literally printed prints for myself 
and you pretty much had to do seances and sacrifice things and hold rituals and everything like that just to get one print out of that thing. You literally had to wait waste half a cartridge making prints until it actually started making good ones. And we get those stupid lines on there. And if you're making art prints, any kind of lines, well, that just ruins the print. And, of course, the printer would just get jammed for no reason whatsoever. So, original applesauce, I definitely, I concur. Oh, boy, that's a... Uh, I'm so glad. And then I had to shrink wrap those things. And even that was a bit satanic too. Because the shrink wrapping could always go in some weird direction. So again, I'm going to throw a little bit of our browns out here onto our... Because we did the magenta out there. There's a little bit of brown out there. Not that the horse is brown. We're just trying to get some variety there. It's very much like we did here on this guy. So original applesauce, I hope that you're having yourself a, a good start to the weekend. I hope so. Well, heck, now it's uh, no longer the... St well, I guess it's... I don't know. To me, I never really... I always thought of Friday as part of the weekend. For some folks, uh, Friday is just the start. A little more cadmium scarlet here. I might try. It's tempted to go with a little bit of a floral yellow or floral orange here. This is our fluorescent paint. Sometimes it's actually a bit easier to use this. You wait for the thing to dry or whatever. And then you come back in with some of the fluorescent afterwards. Yeah, see, that just gave it a little bit more life right there. Ah, uh, original applesauce. Yes, that's the, uh, huh. that is the only proper way to treat a printer demon right there. Yeah, I remember uh, taking a hammer to a, a computer once while it was still on. And that was where they kind of had those little sort of screens or whatever right on the front of them that just, uh, I don't even remember what, why it had that on there. But the green flash of light and the smoke, the puff of smoke that came out of it was very satisfying. All right, this is our, again, our fluorescent orange, especially right here. We've got the, the most glow, right? Really trying to get that nice and toasty and intense. Yeah, let's see if we can't push this up onto here. And we have to sort of do a little bit of a... Yeah, a little bit of a uh, stippling type of a technique here. It's sort of an artifact of being this uh, fluorescent paint. It, it does have a weird consistency sometimes. And we'll continue it out to the edge here. But this is the neat thing about it. It does give you that orange glow as opposed to the yellow glow. We'll do the same over here, too. So we get less of an orange glow, more of, or less, less yellow, more orange. And and what's uh, interesting is that you or you could pretty much say that, that the new stuff that they did when they re-released it was not too shabby. And it does all happen at the same time instead of, well, these legendary legion things. I think that is where they're, that's where they're trying to sneak in some codex creep maybe is with the legendary legions. Hopefully that doesn't get too out of control. Oh yeah, bit there. They they have to. Well, they can use stuff that was in the movie, 
which sometimes are characters well, maybe that didn't really exist but they can't just uh, make up things out of nowhere now the Dun Lending the new Dun Lending heroes and stuff from well that legendary legion I'm, I'm guessing that those maybe come from the appendices or something like that certainly weren't in the movies and having not actually read the books I don't know I haven't even in the lore videos that I watch there's not a lot of mention of some of these other well there's been no mention at all of any of the Umbar heroes like the Knight of Umbar the Hasharin all that kind of stuff so I don't really know just how much they might have gotten in the book if anything again that is uh, that is where Armored Wolf comes in with his knowledge because he knows way more about that than I do I've tried to study it almost like a historical fantasy and and study in first age second age all that kind of stuff <clears throat> and of course I, for the life of me I cannot remember all three kingdoms of Arnor I, I remember Ricardo land right away but I can't think of the other two and uh, I think one of them begins with an A the third one just can't even think of it at all All right, we've got ourselves some. I think we got that pretty well set. What's happening down in here? Probably don't want to do too much that way either. All should be in shadow. I'm gonna maybe see if I can get a little lighter. Well, that's not really a magenta. That's the most. That's like palette sludge. That's slightly red. Uh, love me some Del Amroth, love me some Imrahil, and actually Imrahil in the books, here yeah, let's grab Imrahil. It wasn't Gandalf on Shadowfax that faced down the Witch King, it was actually Imrahil. It was, it was the Del Amroth guys that came and really wrecked some face. They, they were basically the ones that saved Minas Tirith, that yeah, Gandalf cruising around on Shadowfax with a shiny staff. That wasn't really the thing. It was uh it was Prince Imrahil that brought back uh Faramir from the Ramus Icor, which they don't mention at all in the movies, of course. I mean I you I guess in the movie they didn't want to keep introducing new characters. But Prince Imrahil, he was he was one bad ombre. And in the game, though that's that's he's a really bad ombre in the game. He is quite the ombre. Which is why we've got ourselves our dull Amroth army so that we can also have ourselves a bit of Imrahil. We also have was it four long the fat and we have our uh our axemen as well. Now let's uh maybe just a smidge of a light along there. Not too much down here. Oh yeah, this up here could certainly stand for some lighter colors. So we'll just throw this on here. And we'll just softly blend that in. That's it. Think of how hard to reach that area is right there. Think of how hard it, that is, is to reach. And I didn't have to really screw around with that too much. That's very nice. Just basically one sh brush stroke, go in there with a dark, uh, lighter color, and then take my blending brush and just blend that all in there real nice and easy. <clears throat> 